Alright, hello guys. Today we're going to be giving you guys an update on the Halloween snowstorm that we originally talked about in two videos ago, I believe. This is not to be confused with yesterday's snowstorm. It's a completely different one. But before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content. And also make sure to check out the links in the description for our social medias. Now, like I mentioned before, this one isn't to be confused with yesterday's video, the storm we made a video on for yesterday. Uh, this one's going to be heading in just after that from the Northern Rockies down into the Southern Rockies and then back up potentially into the Great Lakes or potentially towards the Northeast. That's kind of the two different options it looks like we're looking at here. Uh, but this is definitely a different snowstorm and will, if it does hit the Great Lakes, most likely be more major than our initial snowstorm, which is going to be hitting before the 29th. This one's from the 29th until the 2nd. So on screen here, you can see that we're looking at our storm track option one. Now, I've been working really hard on these graphics, so let me know what you guys think. I've been improving them, changing them. You can see the wordings have a little bit of different colors within them. I think it looks a lot cooler and a lot more unique. So let me know what you guys think of that stuff. Now... We have two low pressure systems that are either going to merge or stay separated here. So we have our weaker low, which potentially could be stronger, but for our option one, we're taking it with a weaker option for this one. It's going to develop in the Gulf near Texas and then head up through the southeast and eventually into the northeast either way. But on option number one, this one stays rain as our northern jet with our stronger low pressure system that's heading from the Rockies into the southern Rockies and then back up into the Great Lakes, most of the cold is going to stay up north near that low pressure system, and if it doesn't really connect with our our weaker low, then we're not really going to see that cold move into the northeast until after this is all said and done, which would lead to, again, mostly rain to the east of the Great Lakes and to the east of the Mississippi, for that, for that matter, really. Uh, but this would be leading to a major snowstorm potentially for the Great Lakes like Wisconsin, Iowa, Missouri, Kansas, Nebraska, uh, Minnesota, Michigan. These areas could be looking at potentially a major snowstorm if option one plays out. So the interesting thing with this is I think either way we're going to be dealing with some sort of snowstorm here for the Halloween time frame, whether it's for the Great Lakes and kind of the Great Plains or if it's for the more of the Northeast and the um also kind of the Great Lakes region, but less major. So let's move on to option number two here. And uh, this one's definitely interesting as well. You can see, let's start from west to east here. Our northern low pressure system there in the northern Rockies is actually our weaker low on this option. And then our Gulf system there is a stronger low. What this really would lead to is the northern jet really dipping down and heading towards that stronger low and entering the northeast more, and then that weaker low kind of merges with our stronger low. Uh, either way, the weaker low will merge for the most part with the stronger low pressure system. So whether the one from the Gulf merges with the more northern one, which again would be option number one, or option number two being our weaker northern low merges with the more southern coastal one, leading towards potentially some snow for the interior northeast, as you can see there. Still the southeast, we're only going to be looking at rain. It's still October, so you guys can't really complain about that, obviously. And it will be a little bit on the warmer side as it's south of the northern jet, so... Uh, we'll be looking mostly at a rainstorm here. You can see it makes its connection there over the mid-Atlantic. Uh, but for the most part, our more western portion of this storm for the Rockies and then the Great Lakes, it would be a much less major snowstorm if this option were to play out uh, as it's kind of not as strong as that southern one and begins to merge and transfer most of its energy into that Gulf system. This would lead to a lot less snow for Kansas, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, maybe getting a dusting in some of those regions uh, and maybe for the Rockies, maybe, you know, three to six inches, maybe more in the mountaintops. But for the most part, option number one would have a much more major snowstorm than this for the Great Lakes and a lot of those other western regions. Now for the northeast here on this option, again, north and west of that blue line, we're going to be looking at some snow mixing in at times, some high elevation areas getting a lot of snow potentially. There's a lot of things that can happen here, but for the most part, for snowfall to happen with this system, this option would have to play out. Uh, but south of South and east of that blue line, we'd have we'd see mostly rain 
for New Jersey, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Boston, Massachusetts, coastal Maine. All of these regions not really going to be dealing with too much uh, chance of snow unless this is much further east than this is showing. Now to give you guys an idea of yesterday's video, the snowstorm that I said to not get confused, uh, this is our winter storm uh, video that we made yesterday. And this is from the 25th through the 30th. It'll be heading out of the Great Lakes by the 30th and then our 29th storm will obviously be moving in and for the beginning half of it at least taking the same exact track. But once it dips down into Texas and Oklahoma, it's from there where we don't know if it's going to stay south and then merge or if it's going to head through the Great Lakes and take the same track. It is very common to see storms take the same track back to back as the pattern likes to stay the same, especially when they're this close together. So it wouldn't be too crazy. But that's the map from yesterday's video. You can check that one out if you're interested. Now let's look at our GFS run for today, this morning. I think the 12Z run's coming out, but this is from the 6Z run. We're starting things out on the 30th and you can see our low pressure system is there over Oklahoma and Texas and we have snow to the north of it rain to the south this is by midday on Wednesday October 30th let's move on to Wednesday night and you can see it on today's run it starts its northern turn through Oklahoma and Kansas bringing moderate snowfall there for northern and northeastern Kansas as well as northwestern Missouri very very interesting as we move on to midday Thursday you can see Missouri and Iowa getting the the brunt of that one. You can see our low pressure system is staying pretty far inland there over Tennessee and Kentucky, and you can't even see our coastal low, so that one's much weaker than the inland one. So today's GFS run is option number one. Uh, now, as we head towards Thursday night, Halloween night, you can see we're receiving moderate to heavy snow throughout Iowa and Wisconsin. Uh, and our low pressure system is becoming very strong over Michigan. So this is what I was talking about. This could be potentially a major snowstorm, even borderline blizzard if it intensifies or is stronger than what this is showing. Not saying that's going to happen, but potentially with how the model is trending, that could be potential. But you can see there is precipitation there for the coastal New England regions. That's where our weak low is located and it's again there's not enough cold in place so we're really just seeing rain and our much stronger low pressure system is located over Michigan there bringing heavy snow for northern Michigan areas in Wisconsin Iowa and Missouri let's head on uh actually let's take a look at yesterday's run by the same hour so on Halloween night for yesterday's GFS run this is what it was showing so I just wanted to show you how different the model run is day to day uh, we saw a very strong low pressure system over New Hampshire and Maine on yesterday's GFS run, bringing heavy snow for uh, upstate New York and reg mountainous regions of Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Vermont as well. So that's how different this model is showing it day to day. Obviously, it can go back to showing that just as fast as it went away from it. So it's really going to be... Again, a process of just seeing what's going on with this storm. And I'm just trying to give you guys all the options here and keep you guys informed. That's why I'm making these videos day to day. With these snowstorms throughout the year, I plan on making videos like this. Multiple videos for, per storm. People told me to keep them updated with these storms. I'm going to continue to do that for you guys. Let's move on to midday, November 1st. That's going to be a Friday. And you can see most of that moderate snow is for Michigan and Wisconsin there. Uh, we have a 983 millibar low pressure system. Again, very, very strong low pressure system there. Potentially uh, a major, major snowstorm there for those areas. And we see snow showers entering New York and Pennsylvania as we head towards November 1st. So this doesn't mean the Northeast won't see any snow. Just definitely less, less, less snow than what yesterday's run was showing. Now, by Friday night, so this is heading into November 2nd, we see snow showers there for the Adirondacks as well. Some regions in between, uh, or I would say just to the south of the Finger Lakes region there, we see some snow showers lingering. And the cold entering the central United States as well as some of the eastern United States. Uh, and by midday on November 2nd, you could see snow showers and maybe some lake effect snow going on there for Wisconsin, Michigan, uh, and some other regions like that. Here's your snowfall total from today's GFS run. Again, in those greens, we're looking at 12 inches plus. So Iowa, Missouri, uh, Wisconsin. This is why I'm saying this could be a very major snowstorm because we're looking at one foot plus potentially from this GFS run for a lot of these regions. Uh, but you can see minimal snow for the New England and Northeastern United States, even though there is some, which is interesting. 
uh, but throughout the Rockies as well. That's a combination of both our snowstorms that we have going on. So that is a little bit elevated. That's going to be from our snowstorm entering the area right now and also the second one. So we're going to have to wait to see what this snowstorm is going to bring for those areas total. Uh, but you can see in our, dark, in our dark blues into our lighter blues, we're looking at a dusting to three inches. In our purples, we're looking at three inches to six inches. In the pinks, six to 12 inches. And then our greens, 12 inches plus. Now here's your total snowfall from yesterday's run. And you can see it's minimal snow for Wisconsin and those areas. That's only going to be from our first snowstorm. But you can see we're seeing some purples and pinks show up for the Adirondacks. Some lighter blue showing up for Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, as well as Pennsylvania and New York. Ohio, West Virginia, all these areas in the interior northeast receiving upwards of close to three to four inches. So again, less major, but potentially snow if yesterday's run verifies. I'm going to continue to keep you guys updated on the snowstorm. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to share it with your friends and family over Facebook, all sorts of social medias, as well as private messages to them if you feel that it's important for them to see or if they will find the video useful. And anyway, thank you so much for watching the video. I'll see you guys in the next one.